Hi, I'm Dr. O. Today I would like to share with you a practical example of reinforced concrete beam design. If you have any questions on this video, you may reach me through this email. These are two references used in the content of this video. Here a design for reinforced concrete beam in grid 1A, A to D is shown. Design inputs such as section, parameter, material parameters, and actions are shown. This video only shows the practical solution to deflection and cracking checks according to Eurocode 2, which is also the serviceability limit state design. This is table 7.4, basic ratios of spent over effective depth for reinforced concrete members without axial compression. So now we can start on the deflection check. There is always a one good indication which span to be checked for the deflection. Refer the greatest that is required. So in this case, span AB, the AS required is 1081 mm squared. And span BC is 841 mm squared. Therefore, the check of the deflections will be applied on span AB. Here are the basic information for the beam. The length is at meter. The width of the beam is 225 mm. And the effective depth is 434 mm. There are few percentage to be determined. The first percentage of required tension reinforcement, which is rho, the reference reinforcement ratio rho node and percentage of required compression reinforcement, rho prime. So these are the equations for each of these percentage of reference ratio. If there is no compression reinforcement in this uh, point of interest, the AS prime required is equal to zero. After we have determined rho, rho naught, and rho prime, we will check against limiting span to depth ratio, the equations in 7.16a and b. We will compare the rho and rho naught. If the rho is less or equal to rho naught, 7.16a or equation number one will be used. If rho is greater than rho naught, then 7.16b or equation 2 will be used. In this case, the rho is greater than rho naught. Therefore, equations to be used, 2 to be used. In the second equations, few parameters are required. For example, k. The K can be obtained from table 7.4N, the basic ratios of span over effective depth in one of the columns here, K. It depends on the structure system. For example, is it a simply supported beam or is it a continuous beam? So here in this case, we have continuous beam and we are checking span AB, which is the end span of the beam. Therefore, the K is 1.3. So you can input the K 1.3, and we also need the FCK, the characteristic strength of the concrete, rho node, rho, and rho prime, which you have obtained earlier. And so by solving the equations, you get the allowable. L over D, which is 18.7 in this case. 
Alternatively, you can also utilize table 7.4n to determine the L over D. For example, in this case, you are lies with the end span of continuous beam. So you are looking at this particular row of data. So you can obtain your L over D based on your row uh, value. You can do the interpolation in between these two values, which is within row equal to 1.5% and the row is equal to 0.5%. In your case, your row is 1.1%. So the L over the ratio that you have obtained earlier need to multiply with the modification factor if you meet this criteria. There are several cases that you need to go through. For example, the flange section, you need to check whether your flange width to web width ratio is greater than three. If it is greater than three, you need to use the modification factor of 0 0.8. If it is not more than three, you will use 1.0. So in beams and slabs, if the span is greater than seven meter, or indication of support partition easily damaged due to excessive deflection, so you need to use the modification seven divided by the span you have. And if you are designing a flat slab, when the span is greater than 8.5 meter, you need to use the modification 8.5 divided by the span. For the steel area, if the AS provided greater than AS required, which is very common in the design, you need to multiply with the modification factor of AS provided divided by AS required. And this value cannot be more than 1.5. If it is more than 1.5, modification factor of 1.5 shall be used. The last case is FYK. The L over D ratio uh, indicated in the Euro code is based on 500 Newton per mm squared. If the FYK in your design is not 500 Newton per mm squared, you need to use the modification modification factor FYK divided by 500. So let's look the modification factor that's suitable in your case. So modification factor for flange width, the B divided by BW in this case is greater than three. Therefore, 0 0.8 modification factor shall be used. And the length for the beam, the span AB is eight meter and is greater than seven meter. Therefore, modification factor 7 divided by 8 shall be used. And the AS provided is greater than AS required. Therefore, modification AS provided divided by AS required shall be used. When it is equal to 1.45, 1.45 shall be used. And the FYK in this case, is 500 Newton per mm square. Therefore, no modification factor or modification factor equal to one shall be used. So L over D allowable will be equal to L over D basic multiply with the modification factor number one due to flange width, multiply modification factor number two due to span, Multiply modification factor due to steel area provided. And you obtain the allowable span effective depth ratio, which in this case is 19. You need to compare with the actual span over effective uh, span, actual span over effective depth ratio, L over the actual. 
which is equal to the spend at 1,000, divide the effective debt, 434. So you obtain here the actual L over D is at 10.4, which is less than the allowable L over D. So this is satisfied. Now we will proceed on the cracking check. In this cracking check, we need to first determine the steel stress. The steel stress can be obtained or estimated using the expression here. If you look at the M, the M is the total load from the quasi-permanent combination. And the N will be the total load from the ultimate limit state combination. So it is very common to use for the domestic, the GK plus 0 0.3 QK as the quasi-permanent combination. So if you look at the equations here, this equation also multiply delta. This delta is the moment redistribution in your case. In this case, there is no moment redistribution. Therefore, delta is one. So now we have obtained the steel stress FS, which is 262. Refer to table 7.3n in Eurocode 2 and refer to crack width, appropriate crack width that you wish to design. For example, in this case, we will design for crack width 0.3 mm. So you can have determined the maximum allowable bar spacing for crack control by using the interpolation. So in this case, the maximum allowable bar spacing for crack control is proposed as 150 mm. Once you have obtained the allowable bar spacing for crack control, you need to check on the actual bar spacing. So given the width is 225 mm, nominal cover is 30 mm, the main bar is 3H20, and the link is 6 mm. So this is how you calculate the bar spacing, S. The bar spacing in this case will be the width, 225 mm, minus two sides of the cover, two times 30, minus two legs of link, two times six, and minus bars. Missing three here, three times 20, and Oh, excuse me, minus 20, yes, because we want to determine from center bar to center bar. So we are minus half of the bar here and half of the bar at the outer, outer bars. So at total, we have one diameter of bar and you divide by two of this spacing. So it is, will be equal to 66.5. Compare this actual bar spacing with the maximum allowable bar spacing. So now 66.5 is less than 150. The cracking check is satisfied. I end my video on deflection and cracking checks for RCB. See you in my next video.